Hey, hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. I was so happy when I opened up my mail today. I was gifted all of these beautiful junk journaling envelopes by one of you guys. So thank you. Thank you so much for sending me all of your junk mail envelopes. And I really appreciate it. Some of it still had your mail in it. So thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I have all of these awesome envelopes to play with. So what is the first thing I did? I went straight to the internet, okay, to look up what are we doing out there in the junk journal world, in the uh, crafting world, collaging world of um, envelopes. And I found a video on none other than Seven Plaza. Hello, Margaret. And um, she made something in her 100 day um, uh, challenge that she's doing. You know, every day she does a challenge for like 100 days in a row, which blows my mind. Anyway, I mean, look at this. This is such beautiful envelopes that I can use in my project. Look at the size of this envelope. I can totally use this in my project. So thank you. Okay, from the bottom of my heart here on Chronicles of a Crafter. I mean, really nice colors and big windows on some of them. So anyway, I'm going to tell you about what Margaret's done on her envelope um, project and try to replicate that. Okay, so of course today I'm using my Tim Holtz Feel Notes and these will be some of the stamps that I'm using on the project and I have here this envelope which I followed Margaret's um, so far her her cut marks and I can give you the measurement of this particular envelope you may or may not have one of these so just keep that in mind have no fear um, you can always fold a piece of cardstock and make an envelope or um, you know, just copy paper, put a piece of vellum in there, make an envelope. Um, I did a, a different cut on just one part of it. I know my, um, in the video that I watched, she said to leave just a little bit um, wider band here on the side. I cut mine just a little bit too close to the window, but it's not the end of the world. You know, crafting, we'll, we'll move on from there. The size of this envelope is six by nine and a half. Hers was six by eight and a half, so mine's just a little bit longer by an inch. Okay, so all you have to do really is take your envelope and you're going to not even measure. You don't even have to measure if you don't want to. All you're gonna do is take your envelope, make sure that your top is open like, like this. So you wanna cut the top off, you know, instead of peeling open this section right here you want to cut it open this way okay and um, and then you want to cut off your edge over here as well all right so here's a standard envelope let's say it's facing this way okay you don't want to peel open this flap you want to rip it open that way all right and then cut off the edge and wherever your window is located that will become your top alright so that's the part that you want to cut open and again my envelope is six by uh, nine and a half so at the very bottom of the envelope you have to cut off approximately two inches so if your envelope is not wider than this with the window you know the room on the side here for the window if your envelope is not wider or about this size it'll be very difficult for you to to do this project <laughs> just make an envelope guys it's easy easy peasy all right so I cut off the bottom of my envelope it was like this all right and like this and all I did was just cut off the bottom piece this is about two and a quarter inches yep exactly two and a quarter inches okay so from there it gets a little bit uh, easier from there the rest of it is mostly folds and decorating really simple 
So the first thing I did was I took my bottom, because this I know is my top, I took my bottom and folded it upwards. Doesn't matter how much, as long as you know that it's wide enough for a pocket. So you don't want to cover the window, but you want to fold it up so that you have enough for a little pocket right here, okay? And then you want to take your two pieces that you've cut off or your one piece that you've cut off from the bottom and let's just say it's like this. I just placed it here at the edge of the envelope and took about a half an inch and folded it over onto the back side like that. Okay. So I just folded one side uh, half an inch okay so then after doing that let's just say my envelope is looking like this now okay you um, want to uh, put it onto your guillotine or your scissors or your cutting tool or what have you and then just cut it open on the side here and now you have this okay and this will be your leftover piece okay so let's hook that back onto my side right there. And then with your leftover piece, you're going to do the same thing. Place the sealed edge against the, um, the big envelope part and fold that back over half an inch. Okay. And now you have an opening over here on this side. So Margaret calls it a flippy flappy folder or something <laughs> a flippy flappy uh, you know envelope thingy so yeah I think that's what we're going with and um, I have tons of envelopes now to play with so if I make a mistake I can start over it's not the end of the world all right and again the only thing left to do at this point after you've made your folds your flips and your flaps it's uh, decorate so this right here this top piece will become a little flap that flaps open like that okay this second one will become a flap that flaps open like that and then this bottom section here will be glued down to become a pocket and um, on there on her video she says she has seven pockets Right now, I'm only counting five. All right, so I have one pocket here, one pocket here, that's two, one pocket here for sure, that's three, and one pocket back here, okay? This top part is cut open, so there's four, and on this side over here, where we've slid open our top, this will become our fifth pocket right down here all right but I believe um, Margaret went and put a couple more pockets on the tops of these flaps all right so that makes seven so let's just make some let's make something okay let's do it all right so <laughs> all right so here is my envelope when it's fully open all right there's my window and I know exactly what image I'm going to put in there. In addition to that, I'm going to be using this pretty background stamp, you know, to decorate that one. And, um, and again, my Tim Holtz fill notes. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is dye this paper. Okay. So I know that sounds like a lot of work. I'm just going to show you something really quickly and it doesn't require a lot of work at all this is shoe polish all right i got this at the dollar tree for a dollar when it was a dollar and um it's in the color brown but this brown is very orangey okay so it kind of looks like my vintage photo vintage photo is an orangey kind of brown so let me just show you the two together what am I going to apply this with? I haven't even thought that through. Let me just use my dauber. Here's my brown dauber. Okay. So, here. 
This is just a piece of scrap paper. So this is this is vintage photo. Okay. Distress ink. Alright. Not oxide. This is just vintage photo distress ink. Okay. So that looks like that right there. Can you see that? Okay. It's orange almost. It's a, a brownie orange color. I'm going to get a new dauber just so you can see that I'm not making this up. And uh, let's just use my little homemade dauber holder. Okay, brand new dauber. And this is the shoe polish. You don't even need a whole lot. It's like, it's almost the same thing. Okay, so there is the shoe polish on the same paper as the vintage photo. The shoe polish does look a little bit more orangey. It looks kind of like, uh, what is that, straw, uh, rusty hinge maybe. Yeah, maybe it's more of a rusty hinge than the um, vintage photo. It could look more like uh, maybe, what is that, bales of hay or something like that, something straw. All right, so this is, um, let's grab my rusty hinge brush. Okay, I'm going to flip it over so we can see. Yeah, it's closer to Rusty Hinge than Vintage Photo. But yeah, it's almost the same thing as using Distress Inks or Oxides. So, to get this entire thing covered, I am just going to go in with one of my brushes with shoe polish, some Vintage Photo, maybe some Rusty Hinge, and some walnut stain blend it all together and um, instead of taking this to my kitchen and tea dyeing or coffee dyeing it I'm just gonna do that so here's my brushes my little mat I don't want this video to be too long I wish I had coffee dyed this first it would have been a lot easier I'm just giving you guys alternatives to um, to the work that goes along with crafting, you know. So I don't want to get any on the inside, just on the outside. And I'm going to do the shoe polish first only because it's the most saturated. And this will go quick, like it shouldn't take too long at all. And you want like you know highs and lows and shades of uh, coffee dyeing anyway so we're just going to put just a little of it everywhere without even like really there's no rhyme or reason to the process you just get it on there and then um, we'll blend it afterwards with um, some dyes So I hope you guys are having a crafty day. This is like week two of my vacation. I'm still out of town. Um, these videos were all like pre-recorded. But um, yeah, I hope you guys are still enjoying your summers. And the kids and I are having a great summer so far. Right now the girls are with grandma, grandpa. And uh, they're hanging out with them for the week. And yeah, so it's it's a little break for me. 
and I am actually in South Carolina right now at my uncle's house um, slash my second home <laughs> so yeah it's just another another part of my extended vacation okay so that's that both sides somewhat died oh I didn't do this side uh, somewhat died with shoe polish it's not expensive to craft guys it's it's all about using your imagination and whatever it is that you have on hand to make your life easier okay so that's that I'm gonna go in with some I believe this is vintage photo and just pick up where my shoe polish left off on some of these just to uh, blend them together to give me that coffee dyed look and coffee dyed um, you just never know what you're gonna get when you put a piece of paper into water filled with coffee you just there's no telling <laughs> there's no telling what the end result is actually going to be so that's part of the charm as well you know just getting it to resemble uh, coffee dyed or if you find it easier to just go into your kitchen, put on a pot of coffee, and dip your envelope into into it, by all means, I'll I'll still be here. I'll wait, okay. And you can rewind this <laughs> and come back to me if you miss anything. But yeah, I'll still be here working on this. Uh, let's do some rusty, oops, some rusty hinge with the rusty hinge dauber, I believe, nope, this is my rusty hinge dauber. You just really want it to look like it's one cohesive project. And we'll glue down all of these pieces that are popping up later. See, this is what it started off with, with just shoe polish. And this is what it looks like now with shoe polish and vintage photo. You see the difference? All right. And now we're going to go in with um, some walnut stain. And to avoid getting those swirly marks on your paper, you want to start on the edge, on the outside of the paper, and then work your way in. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I didn't even have to leave the room to get that right there. And it's all going to get covered up anyway. <laughs> Imagine that. We're going to cover this whole thing up with stamps and images. You know, it's just to give the impression of coffee dyed. Stay away from your windows. All right, guys, do not ink your window that 
that should be a rule of thumb anyway never ink your windows <laughs> do not put ink on the windows children there's a nice blend okay a nice blend of inks and dyes and oxides and and shoe polish okay now we have that I know there's still some white um, or it, it appears to be white but here it does not you cannot see it on camera the camera may pick up some of the whites or the the lighter sections of the envelope but in my world it looks good for my house as my uncle says <laughs> it looks good for my house try to get this done quickly I know it hasn't been quickly so far but just have a little bit more to go and we can put all these inks away for now and then we can stamp call that done. Uh, just put these away. Rusty hinge and shoe polish and vintage photo. Okay, so here we have this now. So I think the next step would be, naturally, is to decorate. And I'm using my field notes first. I have a few that are my go-to that I use all the time, but I I think I'm going to use some new ones that I've never used before for some interest. Okay, let's do it. First, find my new favorite ink and stamping block. So, yeah, it doesn't take much to decorate this either. A lot of it, I just, I just literally, the first stamp that I put on is inside a pocket. Okay, <laughs> you'll never see that stamp. Great, <laughs> just, just what I needed. And what I like to do is like put my stamps on the pad and make sure they're all right side up and um, yeah just just do a random a random stamp like boom now you got three stamps in one okay and uh, we can flip this over And here, two more stamps, okay? No muss, no fuss. Don't stamp your window, okay? Oops. 
<laughs> yeah, be careful, guys. I'm I'm crazy. I'm a <laughs> messy crafter. That should have been the name of my channel. Messy crafter. Sometimes things fly across the room when I least expect it or need it to. I'm just about done with that looks it looks great I got one more here that I want to put on yeah forgot the other side of here have to stamp this one I just put it in the ink for whatever reason it's okay we'll cover it up we'll cover some of this up we'll just show hints of uh, there being stamps underneath and I still have my background stamp that I need to include so okay so there's that and my background stamp is very large so here's my dilemma. I have to bring in the stamping pad. But I'm not going to use the entire stamp. So to do this, I'll show you what I'm going to do. There's certain sections of the, of the stamping pad that I want and it's mostly just right around here. These little splotches. Uh, maybe some of these over here. And if I get some words, maybe, you know, we'll just see. So the section that I want is right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to stay away from the dragonfly's wings as well as my papers. Okay. And then I'm just going to take my paper and put it onto the stamping block itself. Should have had a wipes ready to go. Okay. So now we have that. See that? Okay. So I'm going to keep on stamping these and then I'll change out my battery as well. And then we'll come back and do some collaging and then we'll glue the whole thing together okay I'll be right back okay guys so it's time to assemble all of this um, right here so this again is what I have for my envelope these are my pockets I've been trying to let my ink dry I went ahead and just stamped some random words on top of the numbers that I've already stamped on there so I'm just trying to let everything dry what I will do is go in with my maybe my PVA glue and um, excuse my arm uh, that's tacky and just glue down all of these um, these little areas of the original envelope that's not stuck okay so 
Let's do that. Okay. And I've chosen my image, of course. You knew I was going to put this little girl in there because she is adorable. I love the innocent look on her face like, what do you mean? I didn't steal these apples. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where does she think she's going? <laughs> she can't get away with that. But, yeah, I just love that, that look on her face. <clears throat> so, I'm using art glitter to um, glue down just these inner sides right here for my pocket. And I think I just got some on the inside here. Don't need it there. And I'm going to glue down here as well. And yeah, some of my ink is still drying on the back, so I'm getting, whoops, I'm getting ink everywhere. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to let that sit and dry for just a moment while I um, work on some of the other sections of the envelope. I just need to snip off a couple of excess pieces that are overhanging right there. And so let's see what else we need to do. I'm going to insert my image into the window. So she's going to go right about there. All right. And I'm just using the plastic um, vellum to as a guide. So I'm going to put glue all along the sides here. At the top. Bottom and sides. Okay. I think I want to put her just up there so I can see what I'm doing through the window. It makes more sense to do it that way. this glue coming from stuck to my fingers I believe all right so there's my little my little image in the plastic I'm just gonna shift it slightly and wipe away any excess okay so that's what we have right there so far and to make a pocket on the side here right here we're going to have to glue down this section right there so I'm going to um, make it the same height as the previous pocket that we just glued down so I'm just going to put some glue right below the photo then fold everything back up and I believe Margaret cut a thumb notch um, 
for her pocket. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I don't know. <laughs> I may, I may do that. I'm not sure now that I've just glued it up. I think I'll just put the indication of a pocket by putting something with a tag on it. A little, you know, pull tab. So yeah, I think that's how I'm going to solve that problem. I don't want to put any thumb notches, I think. Okay, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm going with. No thumb notches. Alright, so there's that. And, um... Let's see, I think the next thing I would do is glue down my little flippy, flappy things here. Uh, I'm going to glue mine on the outside, should I? Or should I put them on the inside? I think I'm going to put mine on the inside. And hopefully nothing catches when you tuck things in. Yeah, just got a little bit of glue on her face there. So anyway, this is coming out really cool. I <laughs> I love it. But yeah, I do need to let this ink dry just a little bit longer. So I'm just going to set this aside for a few more moments. And uh, probably turn on my heat tool and dry some of this ink up. So I'll be right back. The last thing that I want to do on this is decorate it and then put my little flaps in. So instead of gluing the image to the back here, I glued mine to the vellum. This way um, nothing will get caught. I don't know. Maybe. Doesn't matter. But um, yeah, I'm just going to also tuck my flaps in on the inside and by gluing the picture to the vellum I can hide these flaps here if I glued the picture back here when I glue in the flap it would show through the plastic so that's another tip for you in case you want to follow either one of our uh, directions the instructions from 7 Plaza or from from me um, I'm just going to leave a little sliver of the vellum showing in between there. So yeah, let's glue these down. I think all of my ink is finally dry. I also wanted to do some decorating on here, so I'll show you what I've done. I just put a couple of little hints of things there, here, and everywhere. Okay? So yeah, just some little papers I cut up and... And stuck on so let's glue this down I'm gonna use um, art glitter and first I'm going to glue my pocket here oh but what I want to do instead of putting um, punch uh, what do you call circle punches for thumb notches I decided to use this little thing here I'll show you what it does first it just puts a little one of those right this is like what you would use to put a a um, like um, <laughs> you know it's just a little thing here let me see if I can find something to show you what it does I know I have a couple somewhere on my desk I just can't seem to find it but before we're done I will find it and show you what this does so yeah I'm just going to put a little notch right there at the top of this paper here instead of a thumb notch and nervous let me see how far down that goes so that's that so yeah I'm just going to set it in there line it up center there okay so that will show like that all right and I'm gonna put one on each of these pockets as well uh, 
I knew that would happen. But that's okay. I'll do the same thing with the other one. I just didn't go down far enough. Center. And great, that one worked. So anyway, now we have that. And I will put I okay, so on my part on my little thing here, I have two pockets, one in the back and one in the front and that's because I just glued mine differently than uh, Margaret did. So I'm just going to see if my little sliver puncher will fit down inside of here and give me some little slivers. I don't know what this is called by the way. If you do know, let me know. But um, yeah. look at that how cute is that okay so yeah I may or may not I'm I may or may not uh, be unhappy with this I don't know but I did punch it a little too close and there's just a little something there okay so you see that and then this one punched fine but I'm okay I'm I'm not <laughs> disappointed <laughs> one bit. I'm just going to ink around this pocket right here just to give it some more contrast and this one as well. Okay and I will ink around this entire thing. So yeah, it's just uh, the last steps are just decorating and assembly and yeah, you can make it as, as elaborate or as simple as you like. Also, for a little tab, and this is where this might not even matter, just to put a little something there as a tab so you know that this whole thing flips over, I just use my... Um, what is that thing? It's like a little Polaroid uh, die cut. Here it is. Okay. So yeah, I just uh, ran it through my little mini die cutting machine and it cut this out right here. And then I just put some bus tickets and stamps in the back there. And I'm just going to pop this right on here. And that will cover up my mistake that I made on that one. And then here is another one that I ran through the die cut machine and I will put this one here closer to the edge and yeah. okay so that'll go there let me just glue those down I'm using my craft bond extra strength and um, yeah then we can assemble I also just use my little uh, wooden stamp block that says inspiration and one says travel so yeah I just stamped it right across there I got some glue on my finger I'm gonna put this one close to the edge and I'll put this one closer to the center where I made my mistake and I won't feel so bad about it Mistakes are just an example of our ability to try. Okay, so uh, I'm a firm believer in Bob Ross's philosophies where he says there are no mistakes, just uh, happy accidents. So we're going to live with happy accidents because... Life's too short to worry about little things like that, okay? So here I'm going to use Art Glitter Glue. This is just my Art Glitter that I've transferred to a tiny precision bottle. And I'm just going to pop a little bit down the side right there. Use a dry wipe. And clean up the mess. Okay, so now this pocket's sealed and I'm going to do 
the same thing on this side right here okay okay so now we have two little flippy flappy things right here and I'm just gonna put put a little bit of glue underneath there Our glitter glue also dries clear I realize when I glued my image to my vellum a little bit of glue got stuck on the corner right here so yeah I see now that it dries perfectly clear and I'm happy about that okay so my first flap is going to go right about there my second flap will go right about oops right about here if I can get it to go in there we go and yeah okay so it'll look like like so and then one tab will hold down the other tab all right I just want to slide this over just to here if I can if it's not too late okay and we're working with envelopes so it's not you know thousands of dollars worth of crafting material this is a used envelope from Happy Mail so I'm just adding a little bit more glue on parts of this that doesn't have any okay so yep I brought that down as far as I can and this one will go right about there and this tab will hold down this pocket It just takes a little bit of maneuvering, right? So a little bit of finagling just to get everything right where you want it. I could use a pencil and just mark it. <laughs> yeah, why don't I just do that, right? Use a pencil, mark where I want it to go, and as they say, Bob's your uncle. So let's do that. Uh, pencil, pencil, pencil. Here we go. Whoa. Uh... Here, I'll put that one there and put this one there. I want my little tab to line up with the top of the envelope. So that's going to go there. So I'll just mark right here. And I'm going to put art glitter all over the back here. And I'll stay away from the from the crease so that the the envelope the flap pocket will um, open and close uh, easily. Okay, so that goes there. Just staying away from the crease. nice and straight and the other one will just go uh, at the top without the tab going over so this one will go right about there And then this tab will hold this flap close right there okay so it'll flap over like that and then this one will flap over like that all right and there's my pretty little girl in there isn't that cute <laughs> all 
All right, so let's close up the sides of this envelope and find some pretty, pretty to go tuck into all the pockets. So I need to open this, open that, and just add a bead of art glitter right along the edges. And I'll just add a little bit more down here. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's about it for this project. It came out really pretty this can be either a belly bin if you're not if you did not decorate and I'm sorry my son is home today he's in his room screaming at the top of his lungs um, if you're not planning to decorate the back here this can be glued into your journal uh, like a belly bin okay like so you just glue top and bottom and then you can use this section right here to tuck all kinds of cool stuff like tickets and you know what have you right in back there or if you want it to stand alone you can clip it into your journal with either a bullnose clip or what have you you can put a little uh, tag uh, topper here to show that it's a removable you know just like so and um, yeah I think that will look pretty cool actually a little tabber right there all right so yeah I'm gonna leave you guys right about here let me just see if I can put anything in here to just to show you my number of pockets that I have okay so uh, let's grab a big card whoa craft a lunch um, <laughs> let's grab a big card this is just one of the Tim Holtz ephemera packs with large journaling cards on the back. Okay, So yeah, here is my top pocket and I'm going to let my glue set and dry really well before um, sticking anything in here. But oh, here's my top. Is it going in? <laughs> what did I glue? Hold on. Por favor, just a moment, uno momento. It just seems to, oh, the little, okay, I see, the little flap, all right. So, okay, so I have to lean my paperwork towards the back. So there's the tag, right, goes in here at the top. Here is um, a pocket that goes in right here, all right, a tag can go there. Here's another little pocket right here. All right. And here are two pockets, double pockets on the side here. And one towards the back. All right, so here I just want to show you that there are two pockets based on the way that you glue it. All right, so there's a pocket in the front and a pocket in the back. Okay. And then there is this large pocket here in the front of the entire thing, right there. So yeah, this is a fun little project. I think you guys should give it a try. And um, yeah, if you don't have one of these thumb notches work, just be careful when you punch your holes that you use the little measure here to make sure that your all of your holes are the same distance because that's what I ran into a little problem like that so okay so there we go this will go down much further if I if I were, were patient and let my glue dry this would go down to uh, about here okay so yeah so that's that here's that couple pockets there so I have one two three four five six pockets and if you decide not to glue this down um, all the way like if you didn't want to um, make it a belly band where you would glue the top and bottom you can just glue along the side right here and now you have another pocket or tuck or you can glue three sides 
and make it one large pocket. So I do have seven pockets if you count it that way. I believe um, Seven Plaza put pockets on the front of each of these flaps, right? So she had um, seven pockets as well. But yeah, there's my flippy, flappy seven pocket tuck. And I'm going to leave you guys right over here. I hope you guys had a great day and enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we're growing. It's getting it's getting there. Close, closer and closer every day to the 500 subscriber giveaway. I'm getting excited because I have a lot of stuff to put into that giveaway. My videos try, I try to put a video out week, um, daily. So Monday through Friday, sometimes on Saturday. Don't forget to check out, um, Seven Plaza. She is a great crafter. And, um, yeah, guys, stay naturally curious and have a crafty day. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.